Okay, so now we're back. Um, I had a had to kind of put things away. Um, I'm in the middle of selling my house, and we had a a house showing all of a sudden. So I've kind of got put back on this. So I got everything back. Uh, luckily, I did record, and I had I took a picture of of everything. Um, so uh, that way, I would have it um, for for just that simple easy reason so also they had to make the next deck which i've got right here this is the next deck um it's got the spanish era it's got the mississippian area which we are in um in the spanish area so um <coughs> i made that up at least and have that all ready to go i need to get my dice out here again i'm using the really Really sweet looking dice. I love these. I'm going to get the 16 millimeters when I get a chance. Um, they're just really, I love the blue and the gold. It's just, or it's almost, uh, it's, I'd say like navy and gold more than blue and gold. It's kind of got a little purple. I really, really like them. So I've got those set up over here in my dice tray. So, so basically the thing is now is um, after reading, I do get to keep this one piece pipe over here because I do have one mounted here um and from what i gathered and if i'm wrong you guys can tell me but i think as long as i have one um one mounted anywhere in here that that counts so i get to keep the peace pipe here so although the last game i played I didn't have any peace pipes and i made it pretty far um so it's it works out pretty well um i set up my trade goods and i end up i have only got three trade goods um which uh, when we get to those ones with the APs on that, that could cause um, some definitely not some easy things um, to happen. So, um, so yeah, so hopefully um, that won't be too much of an issue. Um, I think you guys can see this pretty good. So, um, so basically it's going to be the same thing. Um, the cards, we go draw the cards. Um, this time we have the armies here, uh, for each of these, uh, we've got the Kado here. So what happens is, is the card will now have, we, some, some still have the up and down die roll modifier, the ascension and the decline, which will help. I still can push these I can push these guys all the way back to their home. Can't go any further than that. Um, so that could help me get a few more trade goods. Um, and also when things move through, because there's a few of them that will move twice. Um, so uh, when we get to um, the other um, additional thing we have is we have the Great Sun here. Um, now I can use this. I can put it on a particular... Um, before the before I draw the card, I can put it on a particular spot, and if they come in, I can ambush them uh, before, especially if it's not mounted, because mounted helps you roll a defense. Defense you have to roll, defensive roll you have to grow, roll greater than the number. So in this case, if this was here, and I and this one came up and I moved here, I move it here. I do a defensive roll as long as I roll a five or six. Uh, unmodified five or six in this case, but if it was modified, if it was on ascension, I could only roll a six. If it was on a descension or a decline, I could roll a four, five, or six. But anyways, and then then it would go automatically back. So um, hopefully I catch that. Um, I'm not playing with a lot of the extra advanced rules, so I'm I'm kind of okay with that. I can add more peace pipes, but I I don't know the 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 APs. I don't know if I'm going to have enough APs to even try that. Um, at least for the um, Mississippian phase. Uh, once I hit the Spanish phase, it's basically just survival till the finish of the deck. Um, so once we uh, once we hit that, uh, we'll go through. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, and we'll go from there. Okay, let's pull the first card. Okay, first card is the Adena culture. Okay, so now this is the first one. We have it in black. So what I have to do is the APs I get are this subtracted from how much I have. Since I have three, I'm not going to get any APs. Now, also, if you notice that we have the different things here. So the, I'm going to lose a lot. Oh, i got to put this guy back. 
I am going to lose a lot with this um, card because I have no APs because I didn't get enough trade goods. So because if the if uh, if the um, if it moves in, um, if it if there's any of these chieftains that are left out, they will go into the conquer chieftain box, which will which will hurt hurt me. So this might be a short game. <laughs> we'll see. Um, but let's go ahead. The Adena P culture phenomenon, which began around 100 BC, dominated the scene in Indiana, Kentucky, Ohio, and West Virginia. But its influence spread much further. The burial of dead bodies covered in the red ochre inside tombs topped with earthen mounds signified some religious and cultural innovations. Accompanied by engraving stone tablets, effigy pipes, black copper bracelets, their mounds and often their mounds were often arranged in geometric patterns. By 200 AD, the Adena evolved into and were absorbed by the Hopewell. Okay, so let's take a look at this. So the first thing we've got to do here is um, this this symbol emphasizes a black tortoise. That's one of the advanced rules that I'm not playing right now. Um, uh, so um, we we won't worry about that. At least I think that's advanced. Hold on a second. Yes, the black tortoise, which would be this symbol right here, is for the advanced game. We're just playing the basic. I haven't won yet, so I'm not going to the advanced until I win. So first thing we've got to do is we've got to move the, the cato here. But we have a peace pipe, so we'll just get rid of the peace pipe. And you'll see why in a little bit. But I'm going to keep that one. Okay, so that one. So now we've got the Shawnee. So the Shawnee's got to move one, two. And then we have Natchez. Okay, so that was the card. Now the next thing is um, we did that, the hostile phase. You could see that. Uh, there's no revolts on this one, so we're okay in that. I don't have any action phase, so housekeeping. Remove the status marker, which we don't have any. Overextend peace pipe, we don't have any. Remove any any controlled chief plane chieftains unless a peace pipe is on that warpath. Okay, so basically I have to remove this one, this one, and this one. Okay, and then I have to adjust my trade goods. So... Again, if I have something mounted, no problem. If I have two of something, that's okay. I can do that. So what we're looking at is we have one mica, two or one, one trade good, two trade goods. And I lost my other hides, so I don't have that. So my trade goods are actually two. So hopefully I can get a yellow card or even a green card to get some positive. Because uh, I need to get that up and... Uh, that's a hide. That would be nice to move that one back. That's an obsidian, um, which I could still mound stuff to if I had it. Now I can save one action point too. So uh, next card is, oh, okay, the chutney game or the chunk, chunk, chunky game. Sorry, the chunky game. So again, APs, we have five. So we're going to have zero. So that's that one. That's the economic phase. The hostile phase. We can do the Kato or the Shawnee. Now, I don't know it's or. So I'm not going to do the Shawnee. I'm going to have to do the Kato. Um, unfortunately, that means that's going to go away. So, uh, But we have the whole Chuck Revolution. So what we've got to do is we have to roll. And basically, as long as it's not a 1 um, and it's a 4, we're okay because we don't control it. So that won't be a problem um, with that. So, so we're just looking. Uh, real just making sure I'm right on that. Mm. There's no effect if it's a rival or a triangle. It's, Also, army on the warpath retreats one land closer to that warpath's homeland speed. Um, yeah, if we do control, oh, if we do not control, oh, 
If the result that you do not control during the post hopeful era, the hostile army on that warpath retreats back one land closer. So this is actually positive because this goes back here. So that's really good. Okay. Well, that's not bad at all. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Okay. I didn't know. Oh, let's see. I forgot to read it here. Okay. One appeal of Mississippian culture to early Indians seems to have been the fiercely competitive sort of chunky. Players always mail through spears attempting to hit a rolling concave stone disc called a chunk chunky stone. Like a ball game of the Maya and the Aztecs, chunk chunky was far more than a pastime. Games seemed to have been fought as a substitute for warfare, and vast fortune and even lives were at stake. Version of this game persists in the historic times among such tribes as the Cherokee or the Chickasaw. Okay. So, and... That one goes away. Again, no APs. No APs to mess with it. So... Oh, positive. Four action points. Angel. See, I got four action points. Okay, so that'll be good. I'll need to do that so I can get some more. Okay, let's go ahead and read, and then we'll do the rest of it. Okay. This large Mississippian settle, settlement in the southwest Indiana near the Ohio River was a classic Mississippian community, characterized by 12-foot defense walls, Five large platform mounds with seven smaller mounds encircling two great plazas. It existed from about 1000 to about 1450. The site was chosen for its frequent flooding, which ensured exceptional fer fertile soil. And anytime we can have a fertile, uh, uh, a flooding that can be predicted or that can be controlled, we'll always have a very good. Um, soil and we'll have a um, settlement so my history teaching is coming out which will always will okay so i got four action points so we need to move some of these guys back so um uh let's see here i think let's see that's a hide that's an obsidian that's a hide and that's a feathers well first of all the shawnee needs to go back so what we're going to do is we're going to take the great sun Oh, and that works out too. Okay, so we've got the Shawnee as in decline, actually. So, which I didn't do this. Shawnee's in decline. The Ho Chunk needs to move forward. And then the Cherokee needs to move forward. Okay. So we have four action points. So, what we'll do is we will. Um, we need to get Shawnee farther away, which is nice, because all we got to roll is a 3, 4, or 5. So I'm not going to use my Great Sun yet for that. So we need a, th we need a 3, 4, or 5. 3, 4, or 5. And we get a 5. Okay. So basically, we take this and move it that way. Pretty simple. And it's standard state of siege games. Um, so, okay. So we've got that one. Uh, so that's one action point. Okay. So now the Cherokee, again... That's a two. We really need to push it back to here. So let's go ahead. We'll do this. I need a four, five, or six. And we've got a three. Or three, four, five. Because it's got to be greater than the two there. Okay, let's do it again. Oh, okay. So do it again. And we get a three. So there we go. Okay. So now we got one more. Um, and so do I want to do obsidian or the hinds? Hmm, what do we got here? That's hides. I already got hides. Uh, maybe I'll get lucky. Uh, I think I'll do. I think I'll do that one. Okay, so I, we're gonna do this one because if I can do that, maybe I'll get a good, good one. Or should I just? You know what? I'm gonna save my one action point. I think I'm gonna do that. Okay. So end of the town round. Um, remove the decline up and down decline marker. No big deal. Um, never did use the great sun on that one. So, but I, I really didn't need to, cause I probably could have pushed the Ho-Chuck back, but that's okay. Okay. So now let's take a look and see what we have. Um, 
Oh, wait a second here. I am not going to use that one. I am going to push for the Kato, and I can use two because I need that hides. Because if I can get that hides, yeah. Because I get one hides over here. This is a hides over here. That'll give me a few more, a few more things. Okay, so great son, I can roll two as long as one of them goes over three. Oh, you got to be kidding me! Do you see that? The snake eyes. I freaking got snake eyes. Sure. Okay. Oh well. So let's take a look at this. Okay. So now. So we got two mecha, two chirts, and that's it. So. Uh, so two mecha, two chirts. So it's two trade goods. Okay. Uh, it doesn't change much on that. So. Okay. Next card. I didn't lose any chieftains though, which is really good. Um, let's see here. Four minus two equals negative two, or two minus negative two equals negative two. Okay. So we have the Mississippian culture. Some pretty nice cards too. Deeply influenced. Let's do it this way. Okay. Deeply influenced. The Hopewell culture, a number of Indian societies in, a, in the Deep South, such as the Whedon Island culture of Alabama, Florida, and Georgia, began to, distinctive, to form distinctive Mississippian culture as early as 200 A.D. Their sites are marked by platform moor mounds and the Birdman imagery and the buzzard cult religion. With the rise of agriculture... Of corn agriculture after 700 Mississippian towns such as Cohota saw a surge in population and cultural influence that dominated most of eastern North America. Okay, so. Okay, so we've got to move the Shawnee up. And then we got to move the Cherokee up too. And that's going to... Uh-huh. Okay, so I have no actions, so I will take this chieftain. It's got to go in there. Again, this may be a short one. Oh, good. Here's a positive one, which is the Serpent Mound. Hey, this one is in Ohio. We get three action points. It's about three hours south of where I live. Okay. 1,300 48 feet long, this gigantic coiled serpent made of earth with what looks like an eggs in the mouth is the largest monument left by Fort Anch by the Fort Ancient culture of southern Ohio. It was built around 1070 AD, probably by ancestors of the Shawnee Indians, the largest effigy mound in the world. It seems to have been built solely as a sacred, sacred place and is not associated with any town or other large settlement. See, that's one thing. Okay, so, got the Kato Revolt. Okay, let's take a look here. Five or six would be awesome. Five or six would be awesome. Ha! Got a five. Don't control it. And it goes back. All right. Okay, now, the Shawnee is in Ascension. You can see that. That's a blue arrow pointing up. Yep. So, it's got to go. Unfortunately, I like to put it right there. So then we have Natchez going here, and then we have the Shawnee. Okay, and I really don't like the Shawnee because now they've just breached my walls. Okay, so obviously we need to do some moving. We got three action points. I should have saved that one. But so this one means I need a five or six. Okay, we're going to grade sun it. Put the grade sun right here. Five or six. Five or six. I need a five or six, and I got a one or two. So that's one action point. <sighs> okay. Uh, five or six. That's a two. Okay. I could use my last. Nope. Uh, I should have used it. Oh, well. I can put two more to flip that back over to breach, because if I get a, if I get a Shawnee this next time, if I don't pass this one, if I get a Shawnee next time, game's over with. So, and it'll be a major, major defeat. Oh, I got a six. 
Okay. Whew. That was a close call. Okay. We are good to go on that one now. Okay, let's move this back. Um, unfortunately, my obsidian goes away. I was hoping not to, but I had to do that. I had to get rid of the shiny. I had to push him back. This is going to be a tight game all the way around. Okay, now let's see here. I still only have two. Yep, I still only have two. Okay. So, let's take a look here. Effigy Mounds. So, we're... Okay, many groups of mound builders constructed effigy mounds in the shapes of animals or men. But after 500 AD, a distinct effigy mound culture arose in Wisconsin. They were among the first to use bow and arrow and left thousands of effigy mounds around southern Wisconsin. They seem to have been mainly nomadic and used ceramic pots and tools made from stone, bone, copper. Around a thousand, they used to, ha they used to have undergone a religious and cultural evolution into the Onita culture. Okay. So, the whole ch Oh, we're gone. Game is over. The whole chucks go one, two, and because my palisade is breached, that's it. If that wasn't, if that didn't finish him off, the Shawnee did one, two. <laughs> Boy, that, I had a feeling this one wasn't going to be good. So, so, and I think that's it, but let me double check. Hold on. Okay, so after reading this, um, I just checked the rules on it. I need to go back um, to this card real quick. So I think we're gone anyways um, because uh, this was like this. Because what I can do is, so that was one, this is two. So what has to happen is, is I still have to roll, so this would be uh, Palisades still. Okay, so this is where sometimes you can go back. Not a big deal. I know a card's coming, and this probably is just prolonging the inevitable because I'll have a couple rolls on that one. So what I'm able to do is I can do a defensive roll. So if you notice, there is numbers. This is 4F. So if I pull this up, you've got 4, 3, 2. So if you're totally, that's awesome. So 4F, which is... <laughs> okay. I teach, so F is not good. Let's put it that way. F is not good at all. So, but if I get a 5 or a 6, they won't be. And I did get a, I did get a 5. So, in this case, we're good. So, so in that case, what I'll do is I'll still move that back like I used my other actions. So, no problem there. So, then this other card, the Effigy Mounds card that we just have... I still have no action points, but what I can do is I go here if I roll a 5 or a 6, and then it would go right here. So if I roll a 5 or a 6, it goes back, and I roll a 2. So this does definitely go this way, and then 1, and then again if I roll. Oh, actually, if since it's breached now, it don't matter. <laughs> It does not matter. So it just prolonged the uh, inevitable. And that's that's the one thing about this game is it really does. It, 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 a few bad roll dies, die rolls, and you know you're you're up you're up up the creek without a paddle. So um, it's actually I my last game I made it all, all the way to the Spanish round. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to do this. This is not going to be good, but you always still keep your score um, uh, to determine final your final um i lose but what i'm going to show you here is they have everywhere from overwhelming victory to overwhelming defeat and so obviously we are not going to have a uh anything close but maybe we have a decisive defeat maybe we didn't lose as bad maybe we weren't as bad so to get your score if you lose you take and you count how many cards you have left so, one, two, three, four, 
6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, and 34. So, <laughs> I just barely make it, but a 34, which would be a negative, is a decisive defeat. So, I didn't completely lose. So, um... I, I really do love this game. It is a lot of fun. This was a this was a bad. Oh, see, it would have happened again. I would have been like going crazy here. Let's see what do we got after that one? Uh, another one again. Ugh. Nope. And you know what? This, okay. Oh, you got to be kidding me. Oh. Okay, if you've seen these cards, which I don't know if you can, okay, they're backwards. So hold on a second here. I gotta put this back. Effigy mounts. Okay, so it's actually this way. So my next card would have been a positive one, and I probably would have helped. Okay, but this one uh, would have been okay. Uh, definitely would have had no problem there. I may have had things back by then. But you're looking at positive, I would have got nothing. Positive, 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 negative. So the next four out of five cards would have been fun. Um, and then, like, oh, that's one. So I may have had two, maybe three, maybe one extra point. Another four, a three, a six. So I wouldn't have done anything on that one. Who knows where things would have been. So, so let me get to the one card. So after you go through, you go through this deck here. And then you come up, ooh, that would have sucked. Oh, that would have been horrible. Actually, it might have been okay. So what happens is you come up to this one, and you file this one, and then you put it to the side, okay? And then you continue running because then this becomes, this is like, uh-oh, we're almost in the Spanish. And then what would have happened is, and if we've had it right here, hold on a second here, I want to do this. So let's go So the way the shuffling worked on this is, once I got through those cards, is I would have pulled up this one. This is the Kusa card. This is saying, oh, we're just in the end of the game, and you follow the directions on what you do here. You put the Spanish, and depending on how many trade goods, if you look down here, the trade goods, they have several leaders here, depending on how many trade goods you get. Now if we take the peace pipes, we'll flip them over here. Okay, so if we would have still been on two right here, we would have had to pick. We had to pick Vaca, DeSoto, and Coronado. Okay, and then we'd randomly draw. Um, we'd would these would be okay. We put the Spanish. We figure out which way to go. Um, and then once we hit the Spanish card, like we'd get things set up for this. And then once we, so we put that one aside and then once we pick up the next card, which would have been the Spanish card, that's when we would have picked the leader. Now we also would have then rolled on the enemy placement about which area they're coming from. Now I had my last game, I had Pizarro. Okay. Now <laughs> this one it seems okay because it's it's only a three, so you know, hey, we got a fifty fifty chance. The only problem is is that you roll two dice and you have to take the lowest of the two. Yes, the lowest. So if one of yours was a six and the other one was a three, you would have failed because you have to take the lowest. And when the Spanish gets here, I was hoping I could show this to you. When the Spanish gets here, what happens is, is at the end you pull the card, you do the stuff, and then you move here. And then basically it's one of those things is, like in this case here, so if we had to do it, I had to roll two dice, uh, three and one, so I have to move them. Okay, so he then moves to the next one, or which actually would be that one. So then, or yeah, that was it. So, got a four and a one. I would move that one. Now... Let's see, so we keep going. Okay, five and a one. Again, not good. A six and a three. And this is what got me. 
and then you're all the way up here and then a six and a one and then we could do the palisades and until you actually get one where you have let's see here four to three five and a one one and a one i still wouldn't have stopped them yet yep. Nope. Uh, I don't know about these dice. There we go. That would have stopped it. <laughs> so having the multiple dice ones are actually harder. So, you know, I'm like, oh, it's three. You know, no problem. Well, three on that. The DeSoto, the two, um, it's not too bad. But so, okay. So you guys call the playthrough. Obviously, I lost this one. Um, I'm still working on some of the, the strategies on how I want to do some of the strategies on this, but I really do love this game. It's a lot of fun. Um, the, the variety on how things come, you can't plan for everything. You can have an idea of what you want to do, but the dice a lot of times will not let you do uh, everything that you want. So what I recommend is that you know get this game i really you know it's quick it's easy like i said i had to take it down and then i put it right back up it's it's easy to play multiple times um and that makes it a lot of fun um it's you know not too god awful expensive um you know uh so but i would definitely recommend it it's fun it's light so if you're looking for something that's not crazy heavy, uh, kind of like what I did earlier, then this this is definitely the game. So now the other thing I have to say on that is that um, I probably won't be doing too much now. Um, we sold our house. Um, for those of you that are watching this now, <laughs> we sold our house. Um, and then so I'm going to be packing up a lot of my games and everything that I've got. Um, I did have one addition into my collection, and I just had to have it. Um, and I know this is out of print. It's on the P500 on GMT Games. So I'm just going to move this out of the way. Now, if you guys saw something I did wrong or a clarification, please let me know. Um, also, if you like it. So this is what I got. Okay. And I got it brand new. Okay. And it was shrink wrapped. I was like, oh, did somebody just shrink wrap it? Well, pretty nice. I, I love these GMT games. I love the ones where they've got the solo content. So we're looking pretty good here. We've got the player aids, US operations, jihadist operations. This right here has told me it's never been opened. I mean, look at this. The chits, the 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 clip, they're not, they're still in, you know. I love how GMT rounds their game. They're, they're most of their, most of their, um, when they have these, these, um, chips, chits, um, you know, these, these markers, I can't even think of it now. <laughs> um, so you see, this is, this is pretty awesome. I thought this was pretty slick. I'm like going, Oh, okay. You know, it's unpunched, you know, but, and the board is look phenomenal, but what really gave it away was the fact that, the cards are still sealed. Now, I definitely am going to play this a couple times before I do a run through. Um, it just it, I I watched somebody else play it. I watched it on YouTube. Um, I think it was the late night gamer that I watched do this. Phenomenal job on it. Um, uh, he made me want to get it, and I found somebody probably a little overpaid it, but I wasn't going to wait for it to go P500 because it'd probably be a year and a half before I got that. Still waiting for Fields of Fire, even though the first edition, even though it's past the P500, I know they can only do so much, but I really want that game. So, so you can definitely see that as definitely going to be something that uh, this is definitely going to be a game that I'm definitely um, really into with that. So, so we've got that. Um, like I said, I'm going to play that one for a while. Now, probably I got these also because, um, you know, when I heard you can put them together, it's awesome. Um, you know, it's it's interesting. Um, uh, so uh, I'm going to play them individually. So I'll do a playthrough of one, play through the other. Um, and then I will put them up and I will play them together. 
Um, I'll have to get a big enough table because if it's anything like I think it's going to be, it's going to be good. But I do love this time period, this early 1914, 1918, um, uh, World War World War One era era. There's just so much going on with that. I know a lot of the war games out there, World War Two, uh, Civil War, which you know I get into. Um, I've got. Um, I did pick up, and I had to do this through, I was looking for the strategy and tactics game. Um, hold on a sec. Okay, so I'm back. So, I had talked to you guys about, like, which the games I was going to be playing, uh, which I was looking for, kind of the ones with my family. So, what I was looking for was something for the, um, uh, U.S. invasion in Canada, uh, in 1775, 1776. And I came up with um, Strategy and Tactics, uh, number uh, 236. Um, uh, It is, um, they died with their boots on volume one, and it has two games. It's Quebec 75, uh, which is 1775. I'm currently reading a book on that, and what... Seriously, I don't know even know how we won the Revolutionary War. To be honest with you, um, because the the, I, the the planning that they did, uh, you know, is just crazy. I'm glad we did, and um, if it wasn't for the good leaders that we did have, I think, um, yeah, I'm gonna put it this way: if it wasn't for the bad leaders um, that King George had to deal with, um, and King George himself, I think he was his own what I would call his own worst enemy. Um, he, uh, he, uh, would have had an issue now. And like I said, the reason why I was going for this and I'm looking at this is I've got the counter sheets right here. They're pretty good. It's thin, but it's a magazine game. You know, what are you going to do? But this unit right here. And if you guys remember me telling the fourth New York, the fourth New York is the unit where my one of my great grandfathers um, fought in. So I'm going to get into this. Um, so that was, I thought that one was cool. So, um, and then I went through and picked up one last other game. Um, again, it's a, it's a strategy and tactics. Um, uh, but the real reason why I wanted it was because it is, um, I was looking for this, and I couldn't believe I found it. It's And the funny thing is, this is they died with their boots on, too, but it's Mad Anthony Wayne in Pershing. It's Mad Anthony Wayne um, at the battle and all the, um, the Indians, um, so particularly the Battle of Fallen Timbers, which I live less than 10 minutes away from. I go to the battlefield regularly enough to to just kind of sit and it's kind of nice it's a view over um over that um the kind of the other funny part about it is that i also i um through i i've been substituting for quite a while now i actually do have a full-time teaching job um but i actually substituted at fort miami school uh which is a great school um, but, uh, Fort Miami is a British fault fort that the Indians thought they were going to get help from. So, uh, so I got some, definitely got some stuff planned. Um, unfortunately it's going to take a little hiatus with me doing with selling the house and moving into new house and figuring out where I'm going to do my gameplay at. But, um, you know, if I can figure, get one of those, uh, get one of the smaller games in the Ottoman sunset, the Hasburg, uh, probably the other one that I want to do um, is also kind of like the kind of like the massive say state of siege game is the um, uh, cool necessity, which is about the English Civil War. Which um, I was watching the White Queen on Stars, which is all about the English Civil War. So 
I just realized I shuffled cards that I separated already. So, okay. Thanks a lot for watching the playthrough. Sorry I didn't make it through any farther, but hey, that's the way games go. Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. Uh, no big deal on that one. Uh, but definitely uh, recommend it. Mound Builders. Um, again, if you guys see anything wrong, just let me know. Uh, leave it in the comments. Uh, and then, or if you ask me, if you have any questions about why I did what I did, go ahead. So, thanks a lot. Make sure you subscribe um, as I go through. Thanks a lot. Bye.